This is the biggest common on the complex. That rod couldn't have been in the water for more than five minutes. It looks massive. Check that out. The move certainly paid off down this end. Mate, what a day. I know. They are booming out constantly. Welcome to a brand new mini series called Against the Clock. This is something we've wanted to do for quite a while now. And basically it entails going to a complex of lakes and trying to catch as many carp as possible from them lakes. So ideally one from each as a minimum. But we've decided today, so we've come down to Stanley Lakes today. We've got three lakes here on the complex in mind that we're gonna fish. Uh, we've got Swan, we've got Mallard, and we've got the trickier one, which is Elson's. So yeah, basically we've set ourselves a mini challenge of having 24 hour period to uh, catch fish from all the lakes, and hopefully we can uh, put a few fish on the bank. Yeah, so there's actually five day ticket lakes here on site, um, but two of them are sort of like your general course fishing lakes. Yeah. Um, Swan is like sort of the runs water, Mallard's, a little bit trickier. Yeah, a little bit trickier. It can be very moody on the day. And then Elson's is obviously the, the bigger specimen yeah. more. Um, so, yeah, we've got 24 hours. Yeah. The clock starts now. Let's go. Let's go. So I've just um, crept down into this sort of corner swim on Mallard and there's a big overhanging tree here and underneath the tree there's a lovely little glowing spot and I can see two or three fish out over the top of it at the minute. So um, yeah, I think I'm going to put a bucket in here, have another little wander around, see if I see any other opportunities. But if not, this is going to be a good starting place, mate. And we've got Swan behind us now as well, so we can, like, one of us can fish one, one of us can fish the other. The interception point. Exactly. So, yeah, let's go and check out some other spots, and uh, we've got a plan already. So, Brad just had a quick look over on Mallard, and he spotted a few fish close in. Um, so, I've decided to come over and just have a quick look over here on Swan Lake. This is slightly easier than Mallard. It's got a better stock of fish, but even at times this can be a tricky little venue. But um, we've seen a bit of fizzing out in this bay and the wind is just starting to pick up now. We're, we're due a southerly wind today, uh, which is different to what we've had the last few days. So I'm hoping the fish might just start to move on it. Um, so I'm just gonna keep my eye out, see if I can see this bit of fizzing just out there actually now. So yeah, just gonna keep my eye out, see if I can see anything and then this might be where I start off today, but yeah, we'll report back wherever I end up. What are you thinking then? I think, from what we've seen so far, a bit of fizzing on Swan, a couple of fish in the edge on here. Yeah. I think we try and get these two out of the way today, okay. ideally, in yeah. the day. It might not go to plan, but- No, it might not, you know. You never know. And That's then I the plan, think but, yeah. for tonight, we should probably go all guns blazing on Elson's because okay. that's like the trickier specimen yeah. water, you know? We haven't looked around Elson's yet, have we? Not yet, but like we fished down here a bit yeah. in the past. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I think we'll have a rough idea of where they'll be. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's early spring. The fish are stopped moving around a lot. Yeah, now, they're moving they? around so a hell of a lot. There was one there, look. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I reckon we go and get some gear. Yep. Definitely try and get Swan done first. 100%, yeah. Um, and then, yeah. Go from there. Go See from there. See how the day fares and, yeah. Yeah, I think a couple of, I'm probably gonna use a couple of solid bags to begin with. Yeah. I think so. Just, but, just yeah, let's go and get some gear yeah, and then we gear, can uh, uh, reevaluate what we want to do when we get to the swims. Well, you've seen one out there, so definitely a few about. A few about. <laughs> oh, 
Right, so we've actually just come round the other side of Swan, the back of where I was looking not too long ago, and we've just noticed a few fish just going up and down this margin. Um, they're quite tight in as well, actually, to be fair, so we just need to keep it extra stealth, go grab some kit from the van. We're going to come back round here, and this might be our best option of getting our swan fish on the cards for the day. So, fingers crossed I'm going to get, get back down from this tree and, uh, yeah. See if we can't nick a quick buy out of here. Looks absolutely prime. Let's get down. Right, so I've just grabbed the gear from the van and I've come back down to that little spot. We saw those fish moving close in. Um, I've just grabbed my stalking rod and net. Rods, grabbed some gear as well. And I'm just knocking up a little mesh PVA bag now um, of oily bag mix. I'd want lots of attraction, but a small amount of food. These fish, they're already here. So we're not trying to feed them. We're just trying to get a bite quickly. Um, so I'm using a little mesh PVA bag combined with one of our new Northern Special washed out pink wafters. Hopefully, that can get us a fish on the cards early doors. So, um, yeah, I'm going to knock, finish knocking this little bag up, get the rod in place, and uh, let's see what happens. So uh, that rod couldn't have been in the water for more than five minutes. I'd literally just plop that bag in, put the rod down on the deck, and it was away. Zzz, like, yeah, yeah, such a buzz. Like, I don't get to do a lot of fishing these days, but just trying to nick these quick bites here and there, it's just so, so fun. Like, just got to keep an eye on the water, see where the fish are, and then it just shows you, like, just being in the right place. We'll get you those bites quickly. He's a nice little scaly one, actually. Small one, but a nice one. Must be one of uh, Phil's little stockies. Let's uh, get the net ready. Come on, boy. Here we go. Yeah. That's the first one, lad. We'll take them. First one off a mark in the little challenge. I think now, mate. Yeah. I know we've caught one quick here, but I think we should move up the other end and try and get one out of Mallard as well. Yeah, go back and up, up and have a look where we started, basically. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. we can have one rod in Mallard then. Like, I can fish in there and you can fish in Swan or whatever, you know? That sounds like a good idea. So, yeah, we'll get this fish out, show you it quickly, pack up a little bit we've got, head back around there and, uh, yeah, see how we get on. Well, he might be small, but it's a nice little start for our mini venue challenge. So he came literally within minutes of lowering that rod in. So I think what me and Brad have decided to do is we're going to head up the other end of the lake now, try for something a little bit bigger up where we initially started. So, um, yeah, thanks for paying us a visit, mate, and getting us up and running. But, yeah, let's go and see if we can get something a little bit bigger now.
Right, so we've just moved up to Malad and I'm currently sat at the back of the swim in the area that I saw him in the snag earlier. And I'm just tying up a little rig now, I'm just knocking up a little solid bag because uh, the area that them fish were is sort of like under the snag and to be honest, I don't know what I'm going to be dropping on. So there's bound to be some twigs and fit debris down there. So solid bag just ensures that my presentation is bang on and it provides me with a lovely amount of attraction, sort of like instantly. Um, so yeah, just a little halibut pellet wafter in there, tipped with an NS1 mini pink, love a pink hook bait. And uh, yeah, we're gonna drop it in. And uh, oh, I'd like to say we'd get a quick bite, but I think My this one could be quite difficult. Might not be as quick as mine. It definitely won't be as quick as yours, but um, yeah, we're gonna, I'm gonna book put one out in here you're gonna go on the corner yeah. up there on swan try and catch a bigger one out at swan while we're waiting for this mallard cup to hopefully play ball and then uh yeah we'll get moving again see how it goes against the clock Right, so, we've had another bite. Uh, it took a bit longer than I actually thought it was going to take. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've seen a few fish milling around, but up in the water a bit. Oh, there we go. So yeah, hopefully we can get this one in, and then that'll be the second fish of the day from Swan. Got me old Gilly here as well. Gilly called Philly. <laughs> Have you netted fish before, mate? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Phil. So there we go, a lovely little swan mirror. Um, the move certainly paid off down this end. I mean, the bite took a little bit longer than the first one, probably around about 20 minutes, but still those little oily bags of pellet doing the trick, getting the bites. And uh, yeah, we can tick off another carp from swan. So I'm either gonna stick out here for another bite or maybe nip over onto Mallard, see if I can uh, help Brad put one on the score sheet. But uh, yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah, we'll get it back and uh, hopefully there's a few more to come today. Well, I've given it probably two hours in this swim now and unfortunately nothing has happened whatsoever. The fish that were in the snag have vacated the area and I feel like if I was going to get a bite it would have happened by now. Um, the lake's getting quite busy now, obviously it's a day ticket and um, yeah pretty much every swim is near enough taken already it's the bank holiday weekend this weekend which obviously everyone wants to get out fishing so i think for now we need to move if i'm honest um we need to we need to get over have a look at elson's and see if we can get on some fish on there obviously alex has had a couple out of swan which is great so that's that like ticked off but i think at the minute we're gonna to have to put this on the back burner and get back on the barrow because, yeah, there's not a lot happening. There isn't really any options to move either. So, 
Yeah, I think I'm going to crank them rods in now. Well, crank the rod in and uh, go and have a look at Elson's. In hindsight, I made a mistake going into that corner on Mallard. I got excited when I saw a couple of fish in them snags and I had to have a go. I thought there was an opportunity there, but it soon fizzled out. When really, I should have had a real good look around, looked for more fish to obviously create a better opportunity. But for now, we're gonna head over to Elson's and then fingers crossed, something will present itself on Mallard throughout the rest of the trip. So, just uh, come around to Elson's and we've had a walk around the back of the lake. So this is all, well, most of it's a no fishing bank actually, and then you've got a couple of pegs down at the end. But um, this bit right here on the end of the wind is looking quite promising. We've already seen a little bit of fizzing out here. I'm sure they're going to be down there, down here on this new wind. Like, they, they were certainly getting on the wind when we fished over on Swan. So I've got no doubts that these Elson's carp are going to be doing the same sort of thing. So yeah, I'm just going to spend a bit of time just watching the water. Let the fish sort of tell you where they want to be. So looking out for fizzers, looking out for ones showing. And um, yeah, this might well be our first put of call. I think I'm going to sort of go more open water and Brad's going to fish like closer in, like sort of edge fishing, snag fishing sort of thing. But we're go both going to sort of go down in this bay. Um, open water is always my sort of thing, whereas Brad loves his snag fishing and his uh, edge fishing. So playing to our advantages really a little bit with that. Um, so yeah, we're just going to keep watching for a bit. It's sort of early afternoon now, so we've got a bit of time yet before it sort of gets dark now. The light level is increasing, so yeah, let's just see what happens. Ow, there's a 30 pound common sitting like a rod length from the bank in front of me, just like mid-water. <laughs> oh, his gills are going nuts. Oh, there's another one coming in. Oh, he's dropping down a feeding as well. Mate, they polished this off recently, because last time I came down, this weren't like this. Mate, he's like 28. And another one. And another one. Oh my God. Mate, these are big ones. Well, it's extremely evident that there's a lot of fish down this end. Um, when we had a look right in the corner, you could see that the water was quite coloured and this is normally tap water clear. And as we've sort of walked down this far bank, the snags are absolutely stuffed with them. Um, lots of good ones as well so yeah i think i'm gonna get some rigs probably over towards the snags i'm stood in now and then uh i think rice he was on about fishing out in open water so i've got a couple of different options covered i'm sure alex will be fishing pop-ups whereas i'll be fishing little wafters on the cleaner areas because the lake bed out there is generally sort of like silkweed Near enough everywhere with the Otter Band of Canadian in it. So yeah, it'll be cool to use a couple of different tactics and um, see which one they prefer. So yeah, I'm, I'm buzzing. I, I need to go and get some rods out. Right, come on, let's go. So I've just knocked up my rig of choice for the edge fishing that I do. It's uh, quite simple, it's just a leg clip set up with a big four ounce lead and then I've got a semi-stiff hook link and that goes down to a D-rig, just wafter style. Uh, hook bait wise, just a homemade tuna wafter, just a little cork dust wafter and then that's tipped with a little sliver of a Dairy Supreme just for that little pink, washed out pink visual aspect. And um, yeah, that's basically it. I've got a little blob of putty about a third of the way down the hook link. Um, doesn't help with the hook in the fish or anything like that, turning the rig over. All it does is ensure, ensures the rig kicks away nicely. So the putty is the heaviest point and then the rig kicks down absolutely perfect. Have got a 30 pound snag leader on just in case. Um, it looks pretty clean over there to be fair. I don't think the snag should cause me any trouble, but just a bit of a safety backup. And yeah, that's it. So I'm going to get it out there. I'm going to stop waffling because I really, really want to catch one of these carp. We've seen a lot of good fish over there. So um, yeah, let's get it out there.
Now, because I'm fishing over to this far side, it actually enables me to walk around and throw my bait in by hand so it's nice and quiet and stealthy rather than spotting. And that's what I'm gonna do now. The spot's only probably six to eight foot from the bank. And um, the mix that I'm gonna introduce is really, really simple. It just consists of Pacific tuna boilies, which I've cut in half. There's a few chops in there as well, loads of different sizes and some halibut ultra mix and also a few Pacific tuna pellets as well. So yeah, that's super, super simple. And all I've done to that is give it a good glaze in the hot chorizo compound, just to give it a bit of added attraction and get them scents flowing through the water column. So yeah, all I'm gonna do is introduce a couple of scoops now and um, get some rods out. I'm not gonna go mad with the bakes. It's still early in the year, but I'm gonna give them probably three or four scoops and spread it around a little bit to get them moving. So just gonna spread it up this little marginal shell. And that is more than enough for a bite. So this is the swim I've decided to fish on Elson's. It's not the, it, well, it's the entrance to the bay because Brad is fishing a little bit further down at the end of the bay. So I've decided to come one up from him, fish the entrance. This is where I saw those fish fizzing up earlier in a couple of different areas. So what I'm gonna do now is just have a, a little bit of a lead around. I know this lake pretty well, like I've fished it for a number of years now and it's predominantly silkweed. There's a little bit of Canadian about, but the lake bed is covered in silkweed. So when I do come to lead around, what I'm trying to find is that really nice, fresh green silkweed where you can get a slightly firmer drop, um, but it comes back and it's nice and clean. It's full of naturals. It's not like that really claggy black stuff. So um, yeah, I'll have a little cast and see what we can find. Just sort of like aiming to where they were sort of fizzing up earlier. Um, that gives me the best indication of exactly where the fish want to be. So I've had a cast already, but if I just flick this out there, See, that's a nice drop there. Yeah, you know, I just generally tend to pull the tip back. And if you can just pull it back with ease, then it's nice and clean. So if I wind this in. So as you can see there, there's a nice bit of that real fresh green silkweed. Like going into the spring, this is full of naturals. And this is the type of weed you want to be targeting, especially on a lake like Elson's where there's weed everywhere. You want to find the best freshest weed you can. So um, yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna get this wrapped up, get a little bit of bait out onto that spot, and at least that's two rods sort of for tonight before I decide what I'm gonna do with my third. But yeah, it's looking good out there. Due to the siltweed present in uh, Elson's Lake, I've gone in on this occasion with a helicopter setup. The helicopter just allows you for that sort of safety buffer to ensure that your rig is always presented over the weed, even if you do end up landing on a bit of weed that's slightly thicker. So all you do is set the top bead to where you think the weed is up to, and then obviously as the lake plummets in, the rig can just settle down on top of the weed and hit that top bead. It's a basic rig, it's a hinge diff rig with a fluorocarbon boom, so it kicks away every time. And I've just coupled that with one of our new test bait um, portable pop-ups that I've had rolled myself. So yeah, hopefully this does the business. Like, spot's all clear and I'm going to get a bit of bait out, but first I'm going to get this out onto the spot. And hopefully we can have an Elson's carp to show you. Good, some money there. Yep, that's the one. That's bang in the middle.
Well, we were just uh, filming Alex spotting, and I've had a bite off the right-hand rod. Really slow bite, to be fair. And um, kited right down this right-hand edge, and at the minute, I've got one foot out of my boot because I might have to go in, but swimming back towards me now, which could be okay. Now that it knows where it wants to go, he's holding his ground. I'm gonna have to get the waders on. It's all panic stations now, especially when we're on the lake with the proper ones. Oh, there we go. It's going out into open water, lovely. Didn't need the waders, I don't think. Still, it's better to be safe. And sorry. I reckon this is a good one. Mate, this is a seriously powerful fish. It's either a male common or it's a big one. <laughs> Well, providing I can get this in, I might even move over onto my lad for the night. Going in, Al. I'm going in. Just trying to get down to them snags. Really, like, ponderous. Probably going to pop up and be 12 pound, but it feels like a good one. Oh, it's tatty, mate. It's tatty. I'm not 100% sure, but I think this is the biggest common in the lake. And it's one that Gricey hasn't caught and I feel really bad now <laughs> while I'm playing it. It looks massive. Look at it, it's a tank. Look how wide it is. Go on in that net, get in there. Yes. I'm sorry, Al. But that is a massive common, mate. <laughs> I'm buzzing, but I'm also really sad. I'm so sorry. <laughs> mate, look at it. That is massive. This is the biggest common on the complex in the day ticket lakes. <laughs> it's huge. What a way to start the series. Blown away. See how big she is. Actually, it's closest to 42. What'd you give me? 41? 12. 12? Yeah. 41, 10? Something like that? 41, yeah, 12. We'll take like that. Wow. Check that out. 41 pounds of prehistoric common. And although Malab beat us up this afternoon, or beat me up, should I say, we have now been rewarded with a ridiculous Elson's Cup. Biggest cup on the complex in the day ticket lakes. What an incredible creature. And it may sound mad, but I think I'm gonna to move to Mallard to try and settle the score there now. So, Al, come on, get in. Hey. What a creature. A bit of teamwork, man. Great teamwork, oh, mate. Yeah, I'm gonna put it down. Whoa.
The reason we took on this challenge mini-series is we wanted to showcase the opportunities you can have when turning up to a complex like we are today at Stanley Lakes. You don't always have to have one lake in mind that you've got to fish. Like it's well worth exploring all the different lakes, seeing where the fish are, and then altering your tactics to suit. So have a good look round, see where the opportunities are, and you'll definitely put more fish on the bank. Well, I have no words. But look at the state of it. So I was there on Elson's. I'm now here with Mallard behind me. And um, yeah, I'm making the move. I'm in the process of moving, but the first thing that I need to do is find a spot, get some rods out, and then try and get one of these fish under our belt. So we've actually been watching the water behind us when we've been on Elson's as well. And there has been quite a few fish down this end. So I think that wind pushed them down here like it has on all, all the other lakes we fish. So yeah, I've just uh, nicked Alex's spod rod because I left mine in the van. I put a little lead on and um, I'm just gonna have a couple of casts around. I don't think there's any weed about at the minute. Um, I think it's just quite silty everywhere. So um, yeah, I'm gonna have a couple of casts around. Probably introduce eight spawns of the same mix I used on Elson's. I'm gonna put a solid bag out and then two slip D pop-up rigs, I think. And uh, yeah, try and catch one out of here. So let's get going again. All right, first chuck. Yeah, as expected, nice drop. Really smooth. I think what I'm gonna try and do is probably look for something slightly different whether that be a little tap of gravel or somewhere where it's really glassy. That was a nice foam drop. Oh, that was one out there, look. <laughs> right, I've had a um, couple of casts now. And, uh, oh, and another one. They're out there, they're out there. Yeah, I've had a couple of casts now. Um, got an idea of what's out there. I had a rough idea anyway, to be honest, but um, it's nice to just confirm it. And I found a nice glassy area at um, the same distance as what Alex is fishing, which is ideal, because it means I don't have to take the clip off. But yeah, just, uh, just short of where them fish showed, actually. So, as you can see, lovely and smooth. Oh, oh that's gonna be the one out. Right, time for some revenge. I'm going one. That's the one. Nice. I like that a lot. Where's that line going? Right, okay, just to the left of that would be lovely. What do you reckon then? It's been a busy old day today, hasn't it? Mate, what a day. I know. To be honest, when, when, when we first said about this challenge, I was like, it'll be easy. Yeah, not, you did not, say not that. Not the fish catching front, but no. like the filming side of it, because we're filming it ourselves. But it's, it's far from, isn't it? But yeah, like the next one, we ain't doing 24 <laughs> hours. We need at least two nights just, yeah, exactly. just to get all of the clips that we need together. 
It's been it's been fun though today. It's just obviously it didn't happen earlier on Mallard, but now you've got another chance. No, to yeah. Get and stuff. To be fair as well, they are booming out constantly. They're active all over, aren't they? They're active like on all the lakes. Yeah, like. definitely, definitely. You think everyone says when the wind's in the east, the fish bite the least? No, they definitely don't. Not this week. It's 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 nice. It's just nice to be out, isn't it? Springs feels like it's here and stuff. Yeah, and definitely. We 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 got Swan in the bag early on, really, didn't mm. we? But to be fair, that that was always going to be our yeah easiest lake, if you like. Well, yeah, it can was, be maybe yeah. on the day. I said to you before we came though, like Mallard's going to be the one that's a bit tricky because even yeah. though it's got like three hundred fish in it, <clears throat> yeah, like they can be proper moody. So. You just don't think you were on a fish a bit this morning? For we, about 30 seconds, and then I weren't. To be it, fair, we yeah. only saw a couple in that snag any, anyway. Do you think they, what, um, they just moved off? Yeah, well, that wind started picking up. Yeah. And then um, we came down, obviously, onto Elson's and uh, looked behind us, and it was like SeaWorld. Yeah, there's <laughs> so many fish showing, weren't there? Yeah, so, yeah, I'm going to stick it out in there tonight, I think. You've done the good thing for the challenge, really, and move off. Because you could have had another bite out of Elson's. 100%. They're showing on the spots now that yeah, I caught Yeah, exactly. Off. So, But I'm not here to catch loads of car. No. Well, we are, but we need to, we, like I said, we need to nail Mallard. Yeah, know? absolutely we do, yeah. And yeah, another yeah. one out of Elson's would be nice. So if you could catch one <laughs> in the morning, that'd be lovely. <laughs> to be fair, they're, fizz they're fizzing over both my spots. And from what I've seen today, they, they seem up for a bit of food don't they to yeah be fair, so. it's generally a day lake as well isn't it yeah. like for bites so sort of more morning onwards and even even like middle of the day on here you think you think you've gone past bite time but actually it's still in prime time sort of thing so. yeah i think we'll have a good chance it's just yeah yeah definitely i think if i can catch one or two by sort of yeah early morning tomorrow out of mallard i might even come back on here for the day yeah or for the remaining time that we've got purely down to the fact of Nothing beats how dark no, them Elson's car park. They are absolutely stunning fish, these Elson's fish, like, yeah. Anyway, I haven't eaten all day. I've racked up about 25,000 steps. So I'm going to go and cook some food. I think you've, you've already eaten, haven't you? I've eaten. I had a nice salmon and rice. Salmon, salmon and nice, rice. Nice, nice salmon <laughs> and rice. <laughs> now I'm going to wash it down with a cup of tea, I reckon. But yeah, I don't sure. think we'll be late out of bed tonight, that's for sure. No. no. Right, I'm going to go make some food, dude. See be you in a bit. Yeah, cheers, man. See you in a bit. Good morning, it is. Can we see that? 25 to 5. And I've just had a bite from Mallard. Don't know where you're going to be able to see this because it is still dark. But that is quite a large common. I reckon that might be a 30 pounder, which is absolutely crazy. So, one of the Mallard big ones and the Elson's big one. Gonna be light in 20 minutes, half hour, so I'm just gonna pop him into a sling and then we can uh, have a look at him in the daylight. Well, good morning from a cold spring like Stanley Lakes. To be fair, it's actually been quite a quiet night for myself. Um, I did see a bit of activity this morning out there, a few sort of shooting up and they've been showing further down the lake. Um, but I've got a kettle on now, trying to warm up a little bit, going to have a coffee. And I've heard Brad's had a fish, so that move he made over to Mallard yesterday from Elson's is uh, certainly paid off. So 
we're going to see what it is. Like he's ticked obviously another lake off the list. So um, yeah, I'm going to grab this coffee, head around there and uh, see what he's had. Right out. You call it. Thirty pound. Thirty pound eight. Thirty pound ten. Yeah. Yeah. Happy with that. Happy with that. Cool. Let's have a look. Scalloped pecs. Well, that is a wonderful start to the morning. A lovely £30 common. And it's even sweeter because this means it's challenge complete. And we have beat the clock. So I am well happy with that. This one came to little pink dairy on the Slip D pop-up rig over that mix that I showed you last night of the pellet and chops. So yeah, what a result. So gonna get it back on its way, do some stills first, and then uh, see if we can nick another one from Elson's. Well, mate, that didn't quite materialise into what we thought it was going to this morning, did it? No, it was very quiet today, unfortunately. Even though the bait had been eaten last night that I put into Elson's, no more bites to be had. I think no. the wind knocked it on the head a little bit. But there we go. Yeah, you can't say we didn't try, though. We've set out, well, we've achieved what we set out to do. Caught from all three lakes. Um, yeah, and it's been, it's been a great trip, really, hasn't it? Definitely, and looking at my phone, my timer says three minutes and 27 seconds remaining and we're all packed up now. So that is the end of it, yeah. but it's been great. Challenge completed, mate. Challenge complete. On to we the next beat one. the clock. <laughs>